but 27 inches is the perfect thing to fit in this corner of our dining room. Hey guys, welcome. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and today I'm gonna to show you a little bit about the loom that has arrived in our house. <laughs> and uh, we are working on several different things on this loom. I've made a couple of different things. I'm gonna share those things with you today. Okay, so basically what happened is that at Knit City, I had a conversation, a wonderful conversation with Kim Worker, who is uh, half of Digits and Threads, a new publication, online publication. She's partnered with Kate Atherley on this. Kim has started down a weaving journey. Uh, I have known Kim for many, many, many years. Back in 2009, she invited me to go to TNNA with her and her friend, Cecily. And uh, it's, it's so weird and crazy and such a long time to think about now, but this is before Sweet Georgia started going to trade shows and TNNA at the time was the National Needle Arts trade show in the States at the time. Uh, we went to San Diego. Kim had invited me to go down to TNNA with her because she was part of the whole community. She was part of the industry and she was like, you should come and see what they do at TNNA. And I was like coming back from a break from Sweet Georgia and wondering what is all this? <laughs> <laughs> so I went to TNA and I remember wearing my hand woven scarves and Kim said something like Felicia you should really try to um, do something interesting with weaving and uh, I have always wanted to do that and it was just kind of in the back of my mind thinking well how do I do that <laughs> for all of these years how do I do that Kim has long time been a crocheter and now she started down this weaving path and while we were talking at Knit City she's telling me about her rigid head loom and how she wants to make this big wide cloth and how she wants to set it at 20 ends per inch and she couldn't get the right density and so then she was doubling threads and then she wanted to use two heddles in order to get the 20 ends per inch and all of these kinds of things and the more and more we talked about it and the more <laughs> it went down the rabbit hole towards her going on to the marketplaces and uh, spending some time looking at weaving looms. And so she would send me messages and she was saying, how about this loom? Do you think this, this loom would be okay? And she was looking at table looms initially. And so I had in helping her research some of these looms, I saw some wonderful listings for looms and uh, didn't send her any of the floor loom ones because she had not gone down that path yet. And then she sent me a set message and she said, what about this floor loom? And I was like, oh, okay, let's talk about floor looms now. And um, we managed to uh, find a floor loom for her that went to her house and it's a Leclerc Artistat uh, 36 inch wide loom and she's working on it now. And these things, they are old looms. They are, even if they're very, very well taken care of, they might be from many, many, many years ago and they might need a little bit of extra TLC. So in any case, Kim got set up with her loom, but as I was doing the research to help her with her floor loom, I discovered a couple of floor looms. And so... <laughs> so this is a 27 inch wide fanny that was made in 1968 by Leclerc. So when I opened the studio last year in the new location, I got a brand new Leclerc Mira 2 counterbalance loom. I love that loom so much. I love it so much. And I love it so much, I really wanted to have one at home. But the Mira, the way that it's designed, is designed to be a square frame, like a box frame, to make it super, super stable. And it's wonderful, super solid, super solid loom. But in order to have that, you need to have a larger footprint. You need to have the space to have that big boxy frame. And so the Fanny is a similar loom to the Mira in that it's a counterbalance loom as well. It's got the two roller system, it's got four shafts, all this stuff. Everything from the front side of the loom is the same as a Mira, except the back has a folding sort of a folding beam. 
So your back beam, if you wanted to, you could collapse it and fold it up so that way it's flush and then you could tuck this and store this against the wall if you wanted to, if you weren't weaving every single day of the year. <laughs> So when I set up the Mira at the studio and I posted a little, you know, video about setting it up and uh, somebody left a comment and they were saying, oh, LeClaire is making me a special 27 inch wide Mira. And I was thinking, you can do that? You can, you can get that? And so apparently LeClaire used to make a 27 inch wide Mira used to make a 27 inch wide fanny. These things uh, no longer are available in their standard catalog. I think you could probably ask them as a special request to make one for you, but they're not in the regular catalog anymore. Uh, the smallest loom that you can get is a 36 inch wide loom. But 27 inches is the perfect thing to fit in this corner of our dining room. You may recognize that in this space used to be the shacked baby wolf loom. And then in order to film the classes with Laura Fry, I took that baby wolf loom from this beautiful corner and I took it to the studio where we filmed uh, for the intentional weaver class. And so the baby wolf looks so nice at the studio. It just fits so nice. It just, it's a beautiful loom. It just fits so nice. I left it at the studio. And so it's part of the studio looms now. And this space was empty. And so I thought I really need a loom to fit in here so that I can weave next to the dining table here and um, and yeah, do all those things. So I wanted one that was not 36 inches wide because that's way too big for this space, but the baby wolf is 26 inches wide. And so I thought a 27 inch fanny is perfect. Now Leclerc, being a company that is located in Quebec, there's a lot of Leclerc looms, like lots and lots of used Leclerc looms floating around that Ontario, Quebec sort of region. Not so much in Vancouver. In Vancouver, I did find um, a number of loom listings, but there were massive looms, big looms. Like I found a Cherryville loom that was available for just a couple hundred dollars, which is crazy. Um, there's 60 inch wide mirror looms, like lots of really big looms, but I just want a tiny loom. <laughs> tiny being relative, I think is the word. Um, but this 27 inch fanny, I found it in Ottawa. I found a listing for it in Ottawa and the seller was amazing. Like so, so amazing to communicate with and he's very responsive. And I don't know that I would have bought a loom from across the country without knowing that the person that I was working with was so conscientious. It could be a little bit of a tricky thing. Looking back, I realized that all of the looms that I have ever purchased have all been brand new. And so I've never had to deal with a lot of issues like things not lining up properly or things being cracked or split or all of those kinds of things, like not having to deal with a lot of old loom issues. I had one old loom, which I made a video about a long, long time ago, and it was a table loom that I think was given to us at some point in time. So it was given to me for free. I didn't buy it or anything. And I tried to restore it the best that I could so that it was in functional order, of working order. Um, but with this loom, I there's only so much that you can know about a loom, an old loom, without seeing it in person. So I had seen another listing for a loom that was kind of on the smaller side. It was also a fanny counterbalance loom. It was in Vancouver. Um, but the more and more I looked at it and looked at really close at some of the photos, it looked like there was mold on it. It looked like there was all sorts of not so good things happening to it. It was just in poor condition. And so I chose not to go with that one, but chose to go with this one that came from Ottawa. So the seller was amazing. Basically what he did was he took the loom and he labeled all of the joints. So all the connections, he would basically put a piece of sticky tape here, put a piece of sticky tape here, and then say like, this is A and this is A. So that way I know when I assembled it that those two pieces would go back together. He was able to break down the entire loom and fit it into two boxes, which also is phenomenal and crazy. Um, but these looms are so intuitive, I feel like. They're very, very intuitive. And so I was able to pull all the pieces out of those two boxes and um, assemble the whole thing without instructions, because I previously assembled the mirror, so I just know how it all fits together. And it just seems very logical. So putting the loom together was great. 
easy, wonderful. There's some parts of it that are quite worn down. This loom is from 1968, and so there's some things that need to be addressed. In the summertime, I could take apart the entire loom and sand it all down, refinish the wood. That's something that I can do as a project in the summertime, no big deal. That's kind of like a cosmetic thing. Um, otherwise, functionally, everything is great. You know, the shafts were fine. What I did was for Christmas, I got myself a set of Texol heddles for this loom and basically uh, just changed out all of the heddles so that they're Texol now. So that's really lovely and wonderful. Um, there's a couple of things with the rollers, them not sitting exactly perfectly straight. Funny thing about this loom is that when you treadle it, the shafts seem to slide to the <laughs> diagonally. I don't know. I think that this is a counterbalance issue with rollers. Um, I have to do a little bit more research into this to find out why this is happening. Maybe it happens because there's no warp on the loom. Uh, but in any case, these frames, when I step on the treadle, they're kind of shifting diagonally sometimes. It's weird. One thing that I think needs to be replaced not imminently, but at some point in time, I need to replace the cords that tie up the treadles to the shafts because they're all a little bit different. They're all a little bit different length, which means that when I step on the treadles, the shafts don't go up the same amount. Sometimes they go up a little bit, another one goes up a little bit more, and so it makes a really weird looking shed. It's not perfectly open and perfectly even. So that probably eventually needs to be replaced. The other thing that I noticed is that the front beam and the back beam, the big chunks of wood beam, they have uh, cracks in them. And I think it's just from wood being dried out, not being moisturized, not being hydrated. Um, so overall, the loom just needs a little bit of TLC. The main problem that I'm discovering with this particular loom, and I've seen this come up in a lot of other forms as well, is that the loom wasn't beating straight. So it's not beating square. So the very first thing that I put onto the loom was a set of tea towels. I was making tea towels for Christmas for my family. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was to put on this warp so I could test it out. Just like, just treadle, just production weave on this loom to get it going, to figure it all out and to make sure that it was functional and working and everything was in order. So the first warp that I put on this wonderful tea towel. And as I was beating, everything was great. And then as I was beating, I was starting to feel like, why does the left side feel like it's higher than the right side? And then I measured the two from the front beam to the fell line, and one side was half an inch longer than the other side. So the beater was basically beating diagonally. And so... <laughs> so I would try to even it out. I would try to straighten the beater as I was beating, and I could see that on one side, the beater had already touched the fell line and on the other side, there was a gap. And so then I just kind of squared it up, left the gap, there was a bit of loose fabric in that sort of area. And then I just kept beating. And as I was beating, I thought I was beating square and then gradually, 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 it would start to get out of line again. It would be out of alignment again. It would be diagonal again. And so that was very annoying. So once the tea towels were off the loom, I basically took everything off and then I had to switch all the heddles from the metal heddles to these Texolve heddles. And at the same time, I went through the entire loom and I tightened up every single joint. Because as you're weaving, the, the whole loom starts to get a little bit looser and a little bit looser. The screws start to like untwist themselves a little bit. So you just go through and tighten everything up until it's like perfectly solid again. This is a solid loom and make sure that everything is square. So I was reading things about being able to measure diagonally from one corner to the other corner and one corner to the other corner, making sure that your loom is square. I took the beater off, putting it on the floor, making sure that the beater itself is square. And um, well, there's some, some issues like the beater, uh, the, there's like a little beater bumper. The bumpers have fallen off on both sides. And so I'm using, <laughs> so I'm using the core of a weaving cone uh, as one of the bumpers on one side and then there's like another sponge thing on the other side. <laughs> the bumpers need to also be replaced at some point in time but yeah it doesn't necessarily beat square all the way across the loom at this time and so this is something that I have to figure out and so if anybody has come across this problem before I would love to hear what the answer is. But right now I'm just weaving um, some overshot in a very narrow 
it's a narrow warp. It's about five and a half, no, six and a half inches wide. And so six and a half inches wide, uh, I'm not really noticing that issue with the beater being not really straight because it's not over a much wider area. So in any case, this is my new old loom. And I'm so, so loving having it here. I, I love it. One of the things that I really want to do in 2022 is have that experience of restoring a loom and going through, sanding this all down, making the wood all nice again, all of those kinds of things, and troubleshooting and working through a lot of the issues that come up with an old loom like this, like the beater not beating straight. How, how do I fix that? Um, when you buy something that's brand new all the time, it's great. It works out of the box. Perfect. Everything's great. But in the case that you are not going to buy something that's brand new and you are going to buy something on the marketplace because there are a lot of old looms on the marketplace. If you do go that route, you do need to figure out how to troubleshoot and how to fix the loom. And especially if you haven't had the benefit of the experience of working with a loom that's fully functional and perfect all the time, coming to a loom that doesn't necessarily work every single time could be very, very frustrating. So, I'm hoping that as I go through all this, I'll show you the other things that I change on this loom as time goes on. So that is basically it for today. I would love to hear about your old loom. Do you have an old loom? Did you buy one on the marketplace, edit <laughs> Craigslist or something like that? Did you have a disaster or it has it worked out really, really well for you? What have you done to restore or fix up an old loom? I would love to hear about that. I am learning a lot about loom restoration right now, even just like what kind of finish to put on this. If you do like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do come back every Friday. We have a new video about something to do with color and craft. Very often we talk about knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. Today I'm talking a lot about weaving in this moment because a lot of weaving things are happening right now. But join us again and we will be talking about lots and lots of different things. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.